Um, so, um, and I think it's um, uh, my honor, I mean, to, to be here to um, present um, a great workshop. Uh, I suppose that uh, if you are a graduate student in economics now, then for sure you will know what an FZT index is. And um, so, uh, but only today that I have the chance to meet uh, with uh, Professor Eric uh, Thornberg. Yes, and, um, and in fact, um, so uh, this work is um, uh, uh, joint work with uh, Peter Langeau and uh, Rob Swinkles, uh, also my colleagues uh, at the World Bank. And um, so, um, uh, for this work, um, we uh, we look at uh, poverty dynamics in Senegal uh, in the net uh, 2000s. And uh, basically, is it an application um, of a new um, kind of a new technique that we are working on uh, to construct synthetic panel data uh, from cross-sectional uh, data? And um, as you know, um, as um, uh, I suppose um, uh, my uh, my uh, as RBB uh, presentation just so that uh, we need panel data, two panel data to look at poverty uh, dynamics over time. And uh, so the question uh, is, what should we do uh, in the absence of two panel data? And so if we only have a cross-sectional survey data, then what can we tell uh, about the poverty mobility or poverty dynamics over time? And um, knowing that, knowing about the real dynamics, I suppose is very relevant uh, for policy makers. Uh, because basically, um, we can have a different uh, policies uh, for those that are in chronic poverty uh, versus those that uh, that are in transitional poverty. So we can either have uh, some kind of long-term policy or just some kind of social protection measure, right? I mean, to, uh, to help uh, people to get out of uh, poverty. So, um, yeah, so in, in the context of Senegal, uh, it can be um, an interesting case uh, to investigate uh, because then, uh, Senegal has been characterized as a slow growth, uh, but then very high stable economy. So basically, uh, that means uh, the country has been growing uh, at, uh, stably, but then uh, not uh, at a very high rate, but kind of at a slow, uh, kind of, um, small growth rate over time. Um, and um, in the past, um, well, I mean, um, generally, um, uh, generally uh, in, in, the, in the absence of two panel data, um, uh, researchers have, have been using uh, pseudo panel data method uh, to look at pseudo uh, to look at poverty dynamics over time, and uh, maybe perhaps uh, as you know, um, uh, like in the seminal paper in 1985, uh, uh came up with a method to construct uh, pseudo panel data uh, based on uh, ACE cohorts or birth cohorts uh, to look at poverty dynamics. Um, but then uh, the limit with that approach is that we need uh, a lot of uh, rounds of cross-sectional survey data to construct synthetic panel data. And for that, we may not have that situation. We, we may not have that luxury, I mean, uh, uh, every time, everywhere, especially for developing countries. Um, so um, another, uh, another method is that um, people, uh, researchers, uh, has been collecting uh, retrospective data basically to collect some kind of data on the history of poverty uh, for households. And uh, with this approach, um, we have a recent study by uh, Liu Bok uh, et al. Uh, to that look at uh, poverty dynamics uh, in Senegal. Uh, but also, um, of course, I mean, there are many uh, advantages with this approach. Uh, but uh, one uh, limit uh, is that uh, we all know that uh, with survey data, sometimes uh, they can be uh, recon for, for survey data collected, uh, you know, like uh, this way, uh, there can be some uh, serious uh, recon bias. So by that I mean that, you know, uh, sometimes uh, households may not remember exactly, you know, what the spending pattern right, or the consumption levels have been, say, you know, three years ago, five years ago, and so on. So basically, um, that can uh, give us some bias reasons. And also, um, Another approach uh, to deal with uh, the, uh, the absence of panel data is to construct some kind of um, asset indexes uh, over time. Which, uh, you know, uh, uh, and, uh, but uh, but uh, basically, uh, uh, that approach is kind of more relevant to, uh, to, to, to look at uh, cross-sectional poverty and not really um, uh, uh, poverty dynamic. Uh, uh, yeah. So um, 
um, as I mentioned um, recently, um, we have a, um, one or two paper. I mean that uh, work on these methods uh, to conduct synthetic panel data. Uh, the first paper is a joint work with uh, David McKenzie and Jun Luo Chao, uh, and that paper is available as a World Bank uh, research working paper. And for the other paper, we are revising it, and basically we are uh, putting it out soon as a working paper. And uh, if you are interested, then I can uh, forgo that paper to you. Uh, yes. In fact, I also send that paper to um, uh, to, to to Zaki. I mean, uh, uh, I mean that in case somebody is interested. Then yes. Okay. So um, so for our um, for for our study, uh, basically it represents our first application to an African setting uh, with no true panel data. Well, uh, not not like a two, you know, like a rep nationally representative household survey data. Uh, but then we have a lot of uh, rich and detailed uh, information uh, in the household survey, in the cross-sectional household surveys for Senegal. Um, so here, basically, here are some main reasons. Uh, that to uh, that to summarize uh, some of our main reasons is that um, that by looking at the at, but at each cross section at, um, at each uh, cross section of household survey, uh, we know that in 2005, 48 uh, percent of the population uh, uh, is uh, 25 to 55 uh, were poor. Uh, and uh, in uh, 2011, uh, that poverty rate uh, decreases slightly uh, to 46%. And the numbers are very similar you know, to the whole population. And the reason we had to look at uh, this particular age range is that uh, we want to, for our method to work, we need some kind of stability on household, consumption, uh, on household composition over time. So basically, we had to keep uh, the age structure for the household has uh, in a certain age range. We get uh, you know, the standard assumption with uh, traditional pseudo uh, uh, panel methods. Um, so basically, um, um, uh, based on our uh, uh, constructed uh, synthetic panel da uh, data, we know that out of the poor, out of the poor population in 2005, 50% uh, of the population, 50% of this group uh, are, are chronically poor. That means basically uh, they are poor in both periods. And um, so basically, our of the poor uh, people, 43% uh, of them, uh, escaped poverty in 2011. And uh, if we look at the non-poor population in 2005, uh, basically about 38% of them fall uh, into poverty in 2011. So of course, I mean, we can also look at the percentage of the population that remain non-poor over time. Uh, but I suppose that we are more interested in, you know, in the population that remain in poverty or go in or get out of poverty. So yes, but still, of course, we can look at the other category. Um, so um, and then um, our method also allows us to uh, to look uh, to look um, at uh, more disaggregated uh, uh, breakdown uh, of the uh, of the population uh, groups. So here, um, for example, for households that, um, that, have, uh, that are in chronic poverty, we can also look at some of the main characteristics. Uh, but of course, I mean here, um, mostly for now, we can only look at some kind of um, uh, association relationship, and it's not a really causal relationship. Uh, but we, we think that it, it can be useful, I mean, for policy makers to know uh, which characteristics uh, for the household, which characteristics are closely uh, related with the poverty dynamics over time. Um, and here uh, we see that you know, uh, chronic poverty rates you know, are higher uh, for households that are male-headed, that uh, live in rural areas, that are less educated, uh, that have uh, some uh, disability, uh, or that are mainly occupied in agriculture, or that have an uh, informal work, or that suffer natural disaster. Or that live in the same place uh, for 10 years or more, or that live in more remote areas, or have a less uh, social capital or social network uh, to fall back on. Uh, and of course, I mean, for the, for the character, characteristics for households that uh, are more likely to escape poverty, uh, they have the opposite characteristics uh, to the households. And uh, uh, we can also look at the households 
the characteristics for households that are more likely to fall into poverty. That means the, the non-poor in children 5 that fall into poverty in children 11. So basically we also see that uh, they, for the households, they also have kind of similar characteristics uh, to the households that uh, remain in chronic poverty. Uh, so before uh, before going uh, into uh, going uh, continue next with the results, um, um, I think that maybe uh, we should uh, spend some time to talk about our method. Basically, that you know, to uh, because then, uh, our method is a bit new. So um, I guess uh, yeah, I mean um, we don't go go over it uh, quickly. So uh, basically, um, here con um, compared to um, the traditional pseudo panel methods, um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, our methods can work with as few as two rounds of cross-sectional survey data. Uh, and you know that previously with traditional pseudo-panel methods, we need you know, a dozen uh, of survey rounds. And then uh, we can also look at uh, less, uh, 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 less disaggregated uh, results, for example, uh, different population groups. And then we also make and you know you sort of like a rather standard assumptions uh, behind uh, uh, for our methods. And then um, in 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 the in the two papers that I mentioned um, in the beginning, we also um, did some validation uh, for our methods uh, to compare with the results based on two panel data. And for that, we look at two panel data from now from different developing countries, for example, Laos, Peru, and Vietnam. Uh, well, basically, um, well, I mean, basically, um, perhaps you know that um, the data from Peru and Vietnam uh, also have a good quality. So, uh, and then of course we also look at, uh, we also compare our results with two panel data, and you know, from as a high-income country like uh, say Bosnia, Herzegovina, and the U.S. Uh, for the U.S., we look at the PSID, the panel of study, uh, 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 the panel study of income dynamics. Uh, but uh, yeah, as I mentioned, um, we, um, we are f at this stage. I mean, we we still need to develop our method more to give, you know, to 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 say with some certainty about a causal relationship. So for now, uh, we would rather say that we are looking at some association rather than uh, causal relationships. Okay. So um, very briefly, um, this, uh, basically, this, this is basically a framework um, here um, uh, uh, for uh, for why. Uh, why sub I1, it is household consumption uh, in period one, and why sub I2, it is household consumption in period two. And basically, uh, when we are thinking about poverty dynamics, uh, we can uh, look at you know uh, two different quantities. Uh, the first quantity is that the probability uh, that the household is poor in the first period, but non poor in the second period, consider jointly together. So um, maybe this, um, this quantity is a type um, uh, uh, not very uh, commonly used, but then um, uh, it, it can be useful. I mean, to look at that kind of the, the absolute number if we look at the total population. And then for the second quantity, uh, I suppose it can be more commonly used. Uh, it is a conditional probability, say, uh, of household. Of, um, say, if the household is poor in the first period, then what is the probability that the household is non poor in the second period, or the household escapes poverty in the second period? So basically, it kept the probability that they escape uh, poverty in the second period. And then, of course, we have on the Z uh, as a poverty lines. And then, um, if um, basically, we, um, we assume a standard framework that uh, household consumption uh, is, a, uh, is strongly uh, associated with household characteristics. And then, uh, we are looking at only household tie invariant characteristics. Because basically we are trying to do on the tie invariant characteristic to form some kind of panel connectors uh, to look at uh, uh, to to connect the different households over time. And uh, here, you know, we make on the uh, assumption uh, with, uh, a pretty sta standard assumption. Uh, but basically, that's a framework that we use uh, to generate the predicted household con uh, assumption. Um, well, so basically, that as a note that, uh, say, if we look here, uh, if we look at um, the survey data for period two, then basically we have a two household uh, consumption uh, exp uh, or expenditure uh, in, uh, in period two. And what we, did, what we do is that we predict uh, household consumption in the first period for only households. So basically, we have the two consumption in one period, and we predict the consumption for the other period, and then together we have the synthetic panel. So basically, the data, the, generate, the generated data, 
uh, at the household level and then we aggregate the household level data uh, according to different population characteristics to come up with the, our different estimate for different population groups. So here, so um, here's some uh, type of that, you know, standard, you know, math detail. I mean, basically, that's a probability, uh, by varied uh, probabilities uh, that we have on the character that we have, uh, we can estimate on the um, uh, coefficient, then we plug it into the by varied uh, normal probabilities, and then we can get at the probability that uh, they are poor, uh, poor in first period and non-poor uh, in the second period. And we can also get some kind of bound estimate on this probability uh, based uh, on some, uh, you know, some results that uh, that were already derived, you know, uh, some time ago. So yes. Okay. So um, and here's that like as uh, an example uh, where we validated uh, our estimates with the two panel data from Vietnam. So um, in the second column, you can see that we have the two panel data, and then in the third column, we can we have the synthetic panel data. So basically, here we have the probability. If you look at the first row for poor poor, that means uh, that is the probability, or that is the percentage of the population uh, that remain poor. I mean, in both periods. And for the two panel data, uh, we have that percentage as 9.9%. And for our synthetic panel estimate, it's 9.6%. And of course, you know, we have all the standard errors and everything. So, uh, so I actually, um, we, we think that the results are pretty encouraging. Um, oh, by the way, the standard error for the synthetic panels are a bit smaller than the two panels because here we are using some kind of model. And you know that when, whenever we use some kind of model uh, for estimating uh, household consumption or some outcomes, then if the assumption underlying our model is correct, then we should be able to see smaller standard errors. But of course, I mean, given that our assumption is correct, uh, in this case, you know, for Vietnam, uh, we see that, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the reason, you know, it's not perfect, right? But uh, I mean, uh, basically, most of the reasons are within two standard errors uh, of the two estimates, and many times we have that. We have the within one standard errors of the two estimates. And we also have got, uh, rather similar results for the other countries that, uh, that, that, that I mentioned. Um, so now um, for, for Senegal, uh, we are using the household survey data in 2005 and 2011. And the two surveys are the, you know, the national representative surveys. And then um, these surveys are very similar to LH, uh, Living Standard Measurement Survey, uh, implemented by, by the World Bank in, uh, in, de uh, in developing countries. Um, and here for our estimates, um, here basically here you can see that um, here we are break, uh, we have the estimate for the poor poor as a 26 uh, about almost like a 27 percent of the population uh, that you know that remain poor uh, over time, and then we have about 20 percent of them uh, that uh, that were poor and poor in the first period, but non poor in the second period. But then it is the first definition of uh, poverty dynamics, right? And then if we use the second definition, which I suppose it can, um, uh, more commonly used, then we see that, uh, as, uh, as you know, 57% uh, uh, of the poor population, uh, of 57% uh, of the poor in 2005 uh, escape, uh, sorry, I mean remain in, in, in poverty in the second period and 43% of them escape poverty in the second period. And of course, you know, we have some kind of margin of errors with the standard errors. So, uh, yeah, so at least um, did give us, you know, some estimate about poverty dynamic, dynamics over time, so. Um, and here, uh, but then of course, I mean, if we want to, um, to get some kind of angle, I mean, on, on the numbers, right? I mean, for policy making purposes, then um, we suppose that we need to look deeper at the characteristics for the population. And here, um, the panel on the left, on the left, uh, it shows the decomposition, or okay, so shows the components uh, for, for the poor uh, in 2005. So basically here, if you look at the poor poor and uh, poor non poor, and if we just add them up, then basically we have the poor in 2005, in the first period. And here we are looking at the rural area and urban areas separately. Right? So basically here, just by looking at it, then we can see that um, the, the percentage of the population that were, uh, that were poor in 2005 in rural area is about you know, 57, 58%. And we have a much lower rate for urban area 
which is about you know like a 36 35 percent something well yeah um, and of course I mean when we look deeper into that we can break uh, on the poverty rate into you know like the chronic poverty or you know like we can look at you know the percentage of the population that can escape uh, uh, poverty right and here uh, for the blue for the blue bass basically we can see that the the, the population uh, that that remain in poverty over time is much higher in rural area compared to urban area. That you know that that, that look at the absolute rate on, on the left panel. And now if we want to look at the relative, you know, like uh, we can look uh, relative um, cap uh, composition, then we can look at the right panel. So for the right panel, for example, if we look at the rural, if we look at the rural area, then basically here we are decomposing. Um, we are looking at the composition of the poor in 2005, and we can see that the chronic, the chronic poor make up about, you know, more than 60% of the poor in 2005. And uh, for the, for the, for the, and for those that escape poverty in 2011, we have the yellow bar, which make up less than 40%. Yes, and then if we do that, you know, also for rural and urban areas, then basically we can see that the current poverty rate is much higher in rural area compared to urban area. Because here we have the blue bar um, for the rural area, it's much higher than the blue bar for the urban area. But on the other hand, uh, we have uh, more people uh, escaping uh, poverty in urban area compared to rural area. And then we have the, you know, we have the, uh, the gold bar uh, for urban area much higher than the, gold, than the gold bar for rural areas. So here basically, um, here's a, you know, offer two ways of looking at uh, poverty dynamics. One is the absolute rate and the other is a relative rate. And then similarly, um, uh, instead of looking at the percentage, uh, of looking at the composition of the poor population in 2005, we can also look at the composition of the poor in 2011. And, uh, and this way of looking at it uh, will give us you know, some idea about the transition of poor. Right? Because basically for 2011, we can break the poor, we can break the poor population into the chronic poor, and those that, that, fall, that, that fall into poverty in 2011. Yeah, and here uh, you can see that uh, if you look at the right hand side, then you can see that the chronic, the chronic poor uh, at, uh, at um, the, cro the chronic poverty rates are much higher for rural area compared to urban area, and for the transition, transition of poverty rates uh, are much higher for urban area compared to rural areas. So basically, uh, rural areas are at a very uh, big disadvantage compared to urban area in terms of you know uh, chronic poverty and in terms of poverty reduction. Um, well, and uh, similarly, um, well, even uh, even uh, we still, as I mentioned, we can even have a look at. Uh, Instead of looking at the percentage of the poor in 2005, we can also look at the composition of the non-poor in 2005 and see how what is the percentage of the non-poor in 2005 fall into poverty in 2011, right? And if we look at this this way, then basically we see a very similar story where we see a very high, you know, like a non-poverty rate uh, for urban area compared to rural areas, and we ha we see that the the, the the percentage that fall into poverty for urban area, which is uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, green bar here, the blue bar here, is much lower for urban area compared to rural areas. Um, and of course, I mean, we can, you know, by looking at the three different angles, we can uh, replicate that, you know, for a lot of different population groups. But here, you know, uh, here I've just shown, you know, some, uh, some cut, you know, like uh, some main graphs. Uh, and here, of course, I mean, another way uh, for us to, to look at even some kind of less disaggregated uh, estimate is to uh, interact uh, gender and urban uh, characteristics. So basically here we can look at, you know, separately, I mean, female-headed household uh, in rural areas. Uh, we can look at female-headed households in urban areas. And then we can see, you know, what is the interaction of the characteristic uh, do, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, uh, re poverty reduction and so on and so on. So basically we can look at as an uh, interaction also. Yes, and this is uh, an example. Yeah. Um, and here, um, well, and here another, uh, 
And here's uh, another uh, type, uh, you know, perhaps um, type style effect is that we can also see that uh, 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 more educational level or higher educational levels will reduce uh, poverty, right? And so basically, um, if we look at the left panel again, these are the absolute rates, and we see that chronic poverty rates are much higher, uh, uh, sorry, are much lower for those uh, with higher educational levels. And then when we look at the right panel where we have the reality, you know, when we look at the composition, then we do see that uh, those with higher education are much less likely to remain in chronic poverty and those with higher education are also more likely to escape poverty uh, in the second period if they were poor in the first period. Um, and of course, I mean, uh, instead of, uh, we can also look at other characteristics. For example, here we are looking at the work sector, and of course we know that, well, uh, we know that those that are working in non-agricultural work have a lower poverty rate and are also more likely to escape poverty. Uh, so that here we are looking at the informality, informality of the work uh, sector, and we see that those that have a kind of formal work contract will have a lower uh, chronic poverty rates and also are more likely to escape poverty. Yeah. So of course, I mean, um, for the summary of the reasons, uh, I just showed you in the beginning, we look at all very, a lot of different characteristics, I mean, to, to come up with the uh, reasons. And here's all like uh, some kind of graphs, I mean, that, that to, to show, yeah. So basically, um, here, um, uh, it seems to us that uh, our proposed method uh, seems to show very encouraging, encouraging reasons uh, for poverty, to look at poverty mobility, that based on uh, cross-sectional household uh, surveys. And uh, we make a pretty you know, standard uh, or parsimonious uh, assumption behind our models. Uh, if you are interested, uh, you can take a look at uh, our two uh, methodological papers, and you can see. And, um, and here, uh, for us, um, we also um, are applying our method to some other countries, and we are also thinking about different uh, future direction uh, for application. And um, and one application that we are uh, working on right now is that we can look at poverty mobility in India, uh, looking at the national sample surveys. As you know, this is a very uh, large survey uh, that we have. And for that large survey, we can look at uh, uh, more finally uh, disaggregated uh, of the population. Uh, and we can even not only looking at uh, a single threshold of poverty, but we are thinking about looking at, you know, like a richer transition. For example, looking at the uh, five quintiles, uh, the different quintiles of uh, consumption over time. So basically, it should be like a five by five transition matrix instead of a two by two matrix that we see here. Uh, basically, the household survey for India are very uh, have a lot of households which allows us uh, to do that. And then, of course, another um, type of important area that we are thinking about is uh, to look at labor mobility, because here, uh, you know, that here we are looking at poverty mobility. Uh, but then for labor mobility, that also important, because basically, uh, as uh, our previous uh, presentation shows that, um, we need uh, to have some good, uh, some good work, right? I mean, to, to help reduce, uh, reduce poverty. So that can be a pretty important area. Uh, and then, of course, in terms of, um, term of technique, uh, we can also um, think about uh, using the synthetic panel data to correct for attrition with true panel data. Because basically, with true panel data, we also have a lot of issues uh, with true panel data, measurement error, attrition issues. And with our synthetic panel data, um, if we have a fresh sample, if we have fresh and good cross-sectional surveys, we can use that you know, to get at the true uh, poverty risk or the true consumption measure, and then we can correct for true panel data. And of course, um, in another direction is that not only uh, we can uh, look at poverty but we can also look at some kind of extension of that. For example, vulnerability. I mean, as some concept of say middle class or poverty line, that kind of thing. And uh, yes. So thank you for your attention.